How's it going everyone? I uh, just finished a little project I'm working on, so if um, I look a little sweaty, uh, that's why. But I thought I'd do a little quick video to show you uh, some things I did and I guess some best practices or things that you can do to improve how you do your jobs, big or small. So the project is our school's growing and we have about four larger classrooms and we needed a fifth. So we had a small room, it used to be a teacher's lounge, desks and things like that, but no one really used it. So we're turning it into a classroom. So I had to do uh, add a diffuser and it's going to be a projector in here so I needed to add an exhaust fan to get rid of that heat because it's a small room it's probably about 15 by 15 and the heat added by the projector is pretty significant so we just put in a little fan just to kind of draw that heat out uh, so I had to run the electric circuit I put a wall mounted speed controller on the wall and mounted an inline fan up in the ceiling and then just vented it into the plenum above another room. It's a conference room that really doesn't get used much either. So pulling the air from this room and ejecting it to above the ceiling in another room. All right, so let me show you what I did. Now we're above the ceiling. Here's my splice box. Uh, as you can see, more labels. We have the feed. 120 feed coming in on the right into the 1900 box, our switch leg going out the top, and then our load, which is going to our fan to the left. So not only do I label the MC cables that are coming into this place, usually I label some more wires and conductors that are in the box, but since this is so small, uh, there's really not much to it. I just make sure that I do label the hot leg of the feed and the voltage that it contains. Uh, another thing that I do, even for the smallest of projects or something like this, is I'll do a little wiring diagram so you can see exactly what you're wiring and then labeling the colors of the conductors just so you don't mess up. Even though something this simple uh, you shouldn't, but good practice, make a little diagram and you can put it right in front of you on the wall just so you can follow through so you know you won't make any mistakes. And then I just leave it there. It's above the ceiling. No one's going to see it unless the person has to troubleshoot the fan. They know what to do, where my splices are, where the speed controller is, and all that. Another little thing with the splice box is a few things. So how long to cut the wires? Always leave yourself, especially when you're roughing in the cables, leave yourself enough room to work with the wires. A good rule of thumb is the length, the length of your linesmen's, okay? I usually pull the wires out of the box, put my linesmen's on the edge of the box, I'll pull the wire to the end of the linesmen's and then give them a cut. Obviously, you're going to cut down, but that's a good length to start with, to leave that much outside the box. Another thing, when you're making your splices, as you can see here, I have two turns of the conductor outside of the wire nut. Even though this isn't being inspected, one of the things inspectors like to see is those two twists right here. Doing that, they're knowing that you are doing a proper splice and spinning the wires. I don't ever want to see anybody just sticking two wires up next to each other like this and then screwing a wire nut on top of it just because the case where the wire nuts came in says no twist necessary always twist okay and then another thing when you push the wires into the box you know make sure there's no tension on the cover itself so when you're going to push it on your fighting wires and your, your pinching wires make sure that they're they're stuffed in there Nothing sticking outside of the box. They're all neatly compressed in there. Not, you know, I didn't shove them in too hard, but I definitely made sure they're in there. And also give your wire nuts a tug to make sure that they don't fall off. Okay, safety first, obviously. 
Okay. Another thing, label. You should be definitely labeling the. If you don't have a P-Touch, I'd get one. They're pretty cheap. But uh, labeling the electrical panel that they're coming from and the circuit. So if someone needs to work on it or turn it off, they can easily find the panel and the circuit. Uh, another thing you can do, this building only has one electric room, so it's pretty easy. But if you're in a really large building and the circuit comes from a, you know, an electric room far away or there's a panel stuffed in a closet, mark it on the outside of this cover. Say, uh, janitor's closet, second floor, or behind the library, well, whatever it may be. Just make it easier, especially if you had to track down that circuit. You don't want somebody else to have to go back and track it down as well. Okay, that's just wasted time and money. So here's the fan right here, just a little inline fan. Okay, there is some rubber bushings on it. There's not much vibrations, but uh, it's connected onto this stud here. And then it goes to above the ceiling over here, and it just vents out over there. Okay. So, added two new drops. There was only one small one here. And over here is where the exhaust comes up in the room. Another good practice to do is, if you're in a building that has ceiling tiles, Put a P-Touch on the ceiling grid, on the tile you have to remove to get to the fan to service it. It saves a lot of time uh, tracking things down if you label the grid. And believe it or not, nobody ever looks up, so they usually don't see them. I normally use like a blue label, but I ran out of them, so this is better than nothing. But labeling things saves time down the line if you have to track something down, or if somebody else comes and needs to work on something. So label thermostats, label ceiling grids, label units. If there's 20 units on the roof, come up with a labeling scheme, naming the units. Most likely they'll be labeled already, but, or, or at least named. So label them, and then label the thermostats associated with it. It's a big time saver. Another little tip that was taught to me by an old electrician foreman I had he told me that it doesn't matter how much work you put into a building, the days running conduit, or in our case, you know, uh, running refrigerant lines or running flex or hanging duct, it doesn't matter how much goes into that. The things that customers can see are what's important to the customer, as in when you mount this plate, making sure the screws are straight up and down, that the plate's not crooked. Things like that are what the customers see. So make sure that when you leave a job or you finish a project that it looks nice and that it would look good in your house and you would do it the way you'd want it done in your home. Because this is what customer sees. If these screws are all jacked up and sideways and the panels cockeyed like this, those are the things the customers see. So make sure you think of that and consider that when you're doing your work. Obviously, you're going to put good effort into all of your work. But make sure these little things you think about in your head. You know, what's the customer going to see? Okay, that's it. A uh, nice quick video. Uh, just a few things to remember. Label your devices. The thermostats, speed controllers. Uh, circuit breakers, panel locations, nice neat work, clean splices, uh, make a lot wiring diagram to follow when you're doing terminating. Make sure you have your two twists under the wire nut, nice clean 1900 splice box. Also make sure to keep your workplace neat, clean up after yourself, and obviously be safe. Turn the power off before you make any splices. Okay. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, leave a comment, and I'll see you next time.